Hello YouTube, welcome to another edition of the Midnight Mechanic. This one here is my own vehicle, it's probably going to be a series of um, series of uh, repair videos. This is my own camper which I bought probably about a year and a half ago and I've not even touched it since. So you can see all the dirt on there. It's basically been parked up for a year. All this rust wasn't here a year ago. Um, bought this one at auction. My main gig is a buy and sell vans. So I've seen this one come through the auction, a 53 plate transit. And you don't really get many Mark VI transits anymore through the auction. So I've seen that, I thought it's, you know, I'll have a wee good look at it just for nostalgic purposes. And then I happened to notice it was kitted out as a camper van inside. So I had a little look at it and I thought, I was actually in the, the process of building a camper from scratch. Um, I'll give you a wee walk round as I'm talking. I was actually in the process of building a little camper from a shop wheelbase one that I had. Um, so I was getting all the pieces together to buy the camper and then this one came through the auction. Just registered as a van, not a motorhome. And I had a look inside. And I was well impressed with the sort of fittings that was in it. So I, I originally I bought the thing thinking that even if the actual chassis was rotten, even if the chassis was rotten and if the engine was knackered, if the price was right, I could transplant all the kit into my project van. So let's have a wee look at how it's been. It's actually been pretty well fitted out. So you got your shelves and stuff up here skylight but just check this out look oh look chrome fittings see chrome fittings but look at this it's got a cooker oven grill all that kind of stuff gas hob it's got a fridge oh, there we go fridge with a little freezer compartment it's got sink with running water um, I don't know if there's water in the tank at the moment but you may hear it get the pump kicking in so sink with running water nice chrome fittings um, a little couch seating area it's a bit damp because it's been lying about. These little speakers down here are actually linked to the, the radio up the front, which I'll show you. It's quite a fancy fancy head unit being put in it. So it's kind of surround sound all around the van. Again, some nice fittings here. This is a double bed up here. Storage. Um, but as you can see, the actual fit out of this is actually really good. And so it seemed a shame just to, to rip it all out and put it into another van. It was so, this van does need a wee bit of work, but it's it's not out with the realms of my capabilities. So, let's give a wee tour of the front and I'll have a wee look here as well. You see the cab inside, pretty clean. Little sort of scuff on the, the seat in there. But like I said, I haven't actually driven this thing for about a year, I put a new battery in it and it fired up first time, so yeah, it actually pulls quite well, there's this little small engine issue which I'll show you in a second, um, but mainly it's just a case of MOT in the thing, if it MOT it, do a little couple of repairs, personalise it, and um, this will be a good little camper for, for me and my boy, let's see, a little scuff there which is absolutely nothing for a vehicle of this age and mileage and stuff like that. What is the mileage on it? 187. Um, but as you can see, for transit, it's quite well kept. Got a leisure battery behind the passenger seat. And a kind of homemade split charger type thing here. Um, all associated wiring and whatnot. It all seems to work. Um, there is a hookup for it as well underneath. So. I'll show you this engine fault. See, it seems to be like a kind of ticking noise. I thought it was maybe a, an injector at first, but I'll let you hear it. OK, 
hear a ticking noise. So, like I said, I've not actually done any work at all on this in the van, because what happened is I bought it, I think, December time, December 2019, and with the intentions of getting it ready for summer 2000, um, and as we all know, March 2000, lockdown happened. So this basically got shelved and it's been parked up ever since. So now that the world's coming back to life again, it's um, time to get it get it ready to go. So have a look in the back of it as well. Otherwise, this, I, I didn't do anything. I actually bought it like this. I didn't do anything to it whatsoever. So we've got a little garage area, some shelving. This door isn't quite open yet because it seems to have stuck, stuck shut. I think with WD-40 will fix that. Um, a couple of plug sockets, some lighting and stuff in the back. Um, but all in all, it's uh, a very good, good van. Let's stay that. It was white when I bought it. Um, four good tyres on it. Um, yep. Yeah. Quite happy with that purchase, but the best part about it was the price. So when I was doing the uh, looking up to build my own camper van, you're looking at I say a leisure battery it might cost you a hundred pounds, and an inverter maybe a hundred pounds, sort of timber insulation hundred pounds. If you're wanting to go like cook it in the fridge, a hundred pounds, hundred pounds, all these little hundred pounds all start adding up. So you're really talking about maybe a grand something like that to convert a convert your own camper eh, if you want to do a half decent finish on it but this one here nobody in the auction noticed that it was a camper they just seen it as a 53 plate transit and the traders don't really like the kind of old rusty transit so nobody even looked up from their, their catalogues so I think I was the only person that noticed it was a camper so I got it for the pricely sum in fact no I'll tell you what if you think if you think you know what the how much I paid for this uh, before and after the fees, if you're really good at that, um, certainly drop a little comment. But I think you'll be surprised. So, like I said, originally I was going to rip all the stuff out, scrap the van, and put it into a newer van. But given it the, um, it's it's kind of too good to start ripping it out. You know what I mean? Um, so the main thing is. I'm going to get it MOT'd, so this will probably be the, a, a series of videos to get this bad boy on the road. So, first things first, before I do anything for the MOT, I need to check out the corrosion. So, Mark 6s, Mark 7s, and not undoubtedly the Mark 8s, once the time comes, it will be a plague with rot. So, as you can see, a nasty big bit of the sill here's away. But... So I'm going to be doing some welding on this. See there. I'm going to check the insides. And the inside's also gone as well. So there's my pin. I've got a new one to put in that place. That's for my hookup. So underneath it looks all scabby and horrible. But it won't look like for that for too long. Um, yeah, so this, this whole corner needs to be rebuilt. Inside and out. So I'll be welding all that up and fabricating some plating and stuff like that to get that done. But see, on the whole, I've seen worse. Um, you know, Mark Seven Transits. I've seen, I've seen a lot worse on a lot newer. So, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't look the greatest at the moment. But again, nothing I can't handle. So I'll get you so a series of videos of you know rebuilding it and whatnot and. Hopefully, show you guys how it's all done. See, this bit here is completely gone inside as well. And you can see a big hole in here. So, there's quite a bit of work involved in this corner. First thing, so I'm going to lose this plastic trim because it's missing on the other side. So, that's the sill, probably the worst bit. Probably the door steps as well. They're pretty famous for it. What's going on here? This could be just suffered first. But again, once you start tapping that with a hammer, you see what bits fall in and what bits don't. A bit I've just noticed in the back a cross member. There's a hole here. There's another one on this side, but I can't because the door doesn't open at the moment. And I, I do remember there's another one down 
down in that corner. So, well done in the back cross member. Probably both sills. I'll have a quick look just now. See what, see what's going on. Too bad actually, a little hole here. But the camera can see right here, a little crack along there. But if anybody knows anything about transits, you'll see that see for a 52 plate, this is actually pretty good. It's not been hacked with weld before, which is good. Because sometimes when people weld stuff they just um just cover up problems and when you start welding any transit, as soon as you start poking a little hole it becomes a, a six feet hole it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger so I'm actually really glad that this one has had very little welding done before so that means that I'm kind of seeing oh there's a nice prop bearing on there fairly new so I'm actually really pleased that I'm not having to hack out someone else's bodged welding work so Let's see what we got under here. Again, I'll give it a proper inspection once I'm welding it. But first things first is just to weld it all, get it all nice and solid. And oh, there's a nice big nasty big hole up there. That'll need to be welded up right next to the fuel tank. But there we go. Yeah, I'll put my finger in there. So I just had to go all over the chassis and. Um, Make sure I've got all this welding work done. The welding bit's the most critical. That's um, the most important thing in a transit. Engines and suspension and stuff like that. It's easy to, easy to swap out, but once the chassis is absolutely gone, it, it makes it a lot more difficult. So, yeah, this is um, the camper. Like I said, if you know how much I paid for this or how much it's worth, um, drop us a little comment. Like four pretty much brand new tyres on it as well, so I'm really happy with that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go for the welding. Start stripping some stuff off. Then I don't think I'll bother with that tick just now for the MOT because as long as the, the emissions and stuff are okay, then the it will not affect the MOT. Um, so I'm going to leave that engine just now, because it actually drives really well, it was a year ago when I drove it, but it drives um, you know, really well, you know, it pulls all, all through all the gears, not got any problem engine wise other than the noise, so I'm kind of thinking it was an injector at first, but a quick look, there didn't seem to be any leaks or anything like that, so I'm thinking it's maybe one of the cam followers or something like that, so a couple of things I can do with that, but again, get back to that, most important thing, get this all welded up and get it MOT'd, and give it a right good wash. Again, it was white when I picked it up a year ago. Yeah, pretty disgusting. So, yeah, if you're into the van life type of thing, um, or you're into the camper vans, then give us a little subscribe and you'll get to see what's going to happen with this one. Um, but I'm hoping to get out and about in it this summer. Lots of places in Scotland I'd like to visit with my boy. And hopefully get a good run out of it. So I know there's a lot of people at the moment who are caravanning and camper vanning and stuff, this staycation type stuff, so um, no doubt I might see some of you on the road. But I'll leave you there just now. That's the Project Camper. Um, as you can see, like I said, it's um, too well fit out to start taking a crowbar and ripping it all out but I'm really impressed with, with what I got so I say for more car related videos or if you're into the camper vans give us a like, comment, subscribe and we'll see you in the next one